Hey everybody, it's Travis here. And today what I wanted to take a look at with you guys was Revit architecture and the importance of levels. We might uh, take a little bit of a look at grids as well, but for the time being we'll just uh, look into this section and take a look at some of the levels that we have in here already. So some of the reasons why levels are so important in Revit architecture or any of the other Revit applications for that matter is the fact that they're parametric and so many other objects within your Revit model are associated to the level. So as you can see here we've got a roof element and it's associated to the lower roof level. And just to illustrate why this is so great and how this works so perfectly is if I change this level just by double clicking on the number maybe I want to add another two feet to it I can simply replace that with 152 instead of 150 and it changes automatically and then you'll notice that our roof element as well has updated so now we have a little bit uh, more headroom here up to the ceiling same thing with with this floor level as you can see it's associated to the main floor so if we were to come over to main floor here and change that just a little bit, add another two feet to that as well, you'll notice that everything updates parametrically. So it's a pretty handy feature. Uh, you, you do have to still bear in mind that you have other objects that are associated to the previous 140 foot level. So this stair would have to be modified in fact. So to do that you would go in and edit the sketch for your stair. But that's for another time. What I'd like to do is just take a look at creating these levels. And so to do that we're going to move into another new project. So I'm just going to close this down and we'll come back to a fresh screen. So as you can see I got a new project open here and if I just close down my floor plans and come down to an elevation you'll notice that I've got some levels already predefined. Now this is because they come with the template we're working in the residential imperial template as you can see from our imperial scale here and if I come down to the levels that are already existing you'll notice some things about them. They've got a blue grid bubble which tells me that there's an associated floor plan for this level. So if I come in here I should be able to find a foundation plan and when I click on it either in the project browser or on this detail bubble it'll take me to that that plan. I don't have anything in here at the time being but you can see that the bubbles themselves are uh, the annotation will toggle you back to that uh, that view so there's some other handy little things about the, the controls on the levels is that you can break them in case you have two levels that come close and they overlap. Perhaps the scale that you're working on for this view uh, causes the annotation to overlap. So if you're working say at eighth of an inch to a foot, that might not be a problem. But what you can easily do is just highlight the level by clicking on it and then hitting this little break arrow here and you'll see that it gives you a little elbow so that's a nice handy feature if you're looking to make some adjustments then you can left click and hold on the level and drag it to where you want it to be as you can see as I'm dragging it around it's changing from uh, what it was initially at 0 to 3, 4, 5 and moving these grid bubbles around you can see that they line up very nice so if I move one the others come with them now this one didn't come with it because I broke its association however I can grab that hollow bubble and line it back up easily enough and just make that straight again so as you saw previously making a change to the height is as easy as double clicking on the number and then entering your value even if you're working in an imperial template, you can enter different values like, uh, say, 600 millimeters, and it will translate out that exact imperial value. So we'll just take it back to two feet exact. 
So we already have a few in place, but say if we wanted to add a third floor to this, or we wanted to make our roof uh, the third floor, we've got a couple different options. What I can do is come in here and change this to third floor, just by again double clicking on the name and then changing the name. And then you'll notice that when you come back to your floor plans, that roof plan needs to change as well. So you could rename it in here using the rename and right clicking on it. But often it'll prompt you to rename it in the floor plans as well. Just depending on uh, on the process that you go through. Now to get started on creating another level we'll create a roof level from this one. There's a couple different options that we have. In your architecture tab, you can go over to the datums panel where you'll see levels and grids. So we're going to make another level and we're going to call that one our roof plan. And you'll notice when you click on the level button, you're going to get some more options underneath here. So we've got a check mark for make plan view, which is essentially going to create the plan view here under floor plans. If you uncheck this, you'll get a little bit different grid bubble it'll be black because it's not associated to any other view so we'll keep that checked and as you can see right now I'm just hovering over in space and it's giving me um, some temporary dimensions to tell me where my level is going to be when I start drawing it so I'm going to stay at eight feet and I'm going to come over here until I get that dotted line that shows me I'm exactly lined up with my other datums or my other levels and I'm just going to come over here drag that with the command initiated till I see that dashed line appear on the other side as well. Now this doesn't look exactly the same because of where I started but if I want to flip this around so that my annotation is on the right I simply uncheck this box and I check this one over here on the right. And if that isn't exactly the level that we want this or the height that we want this level to be at we can simply come in and change that to uh, 24 and you'll see that it, it updates automatically. Now just to give a uh, an illustration of what would happen if we didn't have this make plan view on you can see now that we have a, a level 8 because we had the, the make plan view option enabled so if I come back to level and I disable that you'll notice that this level is black and no level 9 appears in the floor plans. So I'm just going to delete that for the time being because so I'd like to show you another way to make another level. I'll come back to level and before we actually just used this uh, draw option which means I have the, the ability to place this level wherever I left click the mouse. But what I might want to do is use a current level. So to do that maybe I want this next level to be another 8 feet up and I'll use my pick lines option in the draw command and then I'll simply hover over an existing level and depending on what what side of the line my mouse is hitting you're gonna see that temporary dashed line again appear so I'll wait till I see it above level 8 and then I'll left click and I'll have my new level so you'll notice that we created level 9 last time and deleted it so now it knows to create level 10 so again, I'm just going to uncheck over here, check this side, and we have our annotation. So that's pretty simple. You can select these and, and make adjustments simply by left clicking and dragging, and that's pretty pretty handy feature. If at any time you want to increase the, the space in between where your building lies and where the annotations are, you can simply grab one level by selecting it and move the entire uh, column of, of level lines out. So that's also a really handy feature. So the same principles apply for making grids. What I'll do is come back to our foundation plan and as you can see there's nothing in nothing in place right now but if I want to create a grid I come back to that same datum panel and click on grid and I get similar options in my draw panel here as well. So I can start drawing these out. I'll just give it any 
any arbitrary length. So when I click on my grid bubble, right now it's very long. I was zoomed out quite significantly. So if I click in there, you see the grid bubble comes up. If I want grid bubbles at both ends, then I can simply check or uncheck at the other side as well. And this is a very long grid line, so we'll just shorten that up so we can see what we're doing a little easier. And you want to be careful too when you zoom out, the controls start to overlap. So you'll want to make sure that you're zoomed into what you're doing. And at any time with the grid bubbles as well, you guys still have that option of, of creating a jog. So let's just create another another grid line that's not quite as long as time. How's that? That works for me. Now another thing that I could have done to make this zoom process a little bit simpler is simply change the scale. If I came down here to eighth of an inch, you'll start to see things change a little bit. So again, I've got my, my elbow in here and you can adjust that back to straight and then it brings back your, your break. So another nice thing about creating levels and grids is how intuitive they are. So right now I have a, a two grid line in here and if I come in and make a new one, it's going to allow me to simply start where I left off at two. So I'm going to use that same offset pick lines tandem. I'm going to put in 10 feet for my offset. And notice as I click on or hover over either side of my line, it tells me where the next grid line is going to be. And it calls my next grid line number three. So I can keep doing that if this is for a typical floor plan or I can come back and adjust these to what they need to be but if you'll notice I'm still in this pick command so I made a mistake and created another grid line where I don't want them to be one so this seven grid line it should go and it looks like I did it twice so two three four five now if I create another grid line it's actually going to create the eighth grid line next so if I want to start on the other side and start creating some horizontal ones, again, as you can see, it's number eight. I just want to change this one to, uh, we'll say A for the time being. And I'll check that on both sides. And now if I come back to my grid line command again and I start this offset option, I'll go 10 feet again. You'll notice that my next one is B and so on and so forth. So I went quick again and went to the wrong side of this line. So now this one is D where it really should be E. So now because I've deleted E I can change this back to D. And when I go back to the grid line again it should pick up where I left off. So I'll just put 10 back in there and as you can see it started E. So that's pretty simple. You got the option of, of constraining these with the lock tools. You can unlock and lock them. And again, when you move one grid line over, as long as you created them to line up in the first place, they'll always stay in line. So these are some pretty handy features with grids and levels. And I recommend just tinkering around with them a little bit before you get into your Revit experience because the constraints that come from your grid lines and levels are going to what's going to be what defines how easy your experience is with your BIM model afterwards. Thanks for watching. Bye now.